Okay, so welcome back to the second part of this uh, tutorial. Um, we just finished creating the car alpha layer. So uh, if I enable this and do a quick test render, we can see that in the alpha channel. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a custom layer. Again, if we just if I just do a quick render. And we'll switch my mistake. Go to go to the AOVs and do this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom layer which basically gives us some alpha channels which we can use to isolate different parts of this car. So say for example we wanted to be able to change the body, the colour of the body of the car. So anything that has this blue colour texture on it, such as all the car panels, the, the door mirrors, etc. I want to basically create an alpha for those so that I can basically change the colour of that um, of that or any different attributes of that without uh, without affecting any other part of the car. Similarly, I might want to perform some kind of operation on the headlights that um, that I don't want to affect any other part of the car. Same with the rear lights. So there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to assign mats for the car, the headlight, and the rear light. And I'm going to do this basically as a proof of concept, just to occupy three channels of a layer. Uh, but you could apply this to the wheels, to the tires, the rims, the discs, the uh, the calipers. So we could essentially break, we could essentially create ourselves a custom layer just for the wheels. We could create ourselves a custom layer for the grills, for the badge, uh, pretty much the, the fin. Pretty much anything on this car we could basically isolate using this concept as a uh, as a way to do it. Okay. So this is a little bit more involved. Hence the reason why I broke the tutorial so that we can come to this because we're going to be using the hyper shader for this. So I'm going to come into the car body texture here and I'm going to come down to the graph network. network. I'll just try and expand this out a little bit just so that we can um, just so we can see it in action. So this is what our car body looks like in terms of um, in terms of the node graph. So all the configurations for this are done in the AI surface shader are done within the normal attributes of the uh, of the of the sur of the surface shader so here are all the attributes and that's it going out as the surface shader okay so let me try to explain what I'm going to be doing here what I'm essentially going to be doing is adding a material shader group that renders all the car the blue car body parts as a flat color so just like a custom mats layer um, and for this we have to use two additional nodes so we're going to be creating a node I'm just going to click tab and type AI W right color that's what I need this node is basically it has two ports and this sits here as a switch so we can use this to switch out between the car body color and any other uh, shader that we want to apply uh, simply using this as a switch which is activated by our custom layer okay so if we take a look at this here we've got our beauty input which needs to be the same as the base color of the car and then we've got the input which is going to another node which we'll come on to in a second so I'll just click on this and I need to right click on the color and just make sure it's assigned in to the to the channels okay so I should now be able to access that in the right color. So click in there and select it from the swatch. So that is now occupying the base color. So effectively that is exactly the same now. We're inputting that beauty into the base color. So no different effectively from what we, what we were doing originally. Now this is where the interesting stuff comes in now because this is where we actually, we actually uh, create an alternative an alternative material from using the switch to differentiate between. Okay, so again I'm going to type tab and this time I'm going to add in a utility node. Okay, the AI utility, that's what I was looking for. I don't need that surface shader, we've got one already. 
So what we do inside the AI utility, if you look at the properties over here, is we basically assign it a flat color. So in this case, I'm going to I'm going to use the red channel for this. So I'm going to assign that a flat red. So 100% red, nothing in the green and the blue. Okay, and that is going into the into the input channel. So we're using the right color as a switch, and we're going to we're going to switch it from the beauty to the input based on our layer. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So I'm just going to close down the hypershader now while we take a look at this. Okay, one thing I forgot to do before uh, before closing the IP shader was to define the layer. So in our right color, it wants to know what is going to trigger the switch. And what we want to do is we, do, we want to create a new layer to handle the switch. So this is basically a custom AOV. So we're going to create a new one and I'm going to call it Matt ID 01 okay so the reason why I'm giving it an 01 is because I can create mat OD my mat ID 02 and use that for example for the wheels mat ID 03 and use that for, say, for example for the grill so I could create multiple versions of this and create multiple mat sets just purely and simply using this method okay so mat so that is now assigned to the mat ID 1 okay so while we're on the AOVs, because that's created a custom AOV, we can do a test render now. And we can see what we get. Okay, so let this render out for a second. So here's our new layer, mat ID 01. And if I select that now, you can see that this is our mat. So if I look at it in the red channel there, we can see it sat there as an alpha nothing in the green or the blue so we've created ourselves a custom map there just for the car okay so let's move on now and do one for the headlights and the rear lights so again we're going to use the same approach we're going to bring out bring up the hyper shader which has still got our layer uh, populated in the graph and I'm just going to select those two layers because I'm going to be using those two layers again so I'm just going to copy those and now we'll go on to the headlight. So where's the headlight? Here it is, headlamp. Just want to right click on that and say graph network and that swaps out the car body texture with the headlamp texture. And while I'm down here I'm just going to paste that uh, those two nodes in because we're going to be using these. Okay. So what we can see here is something slightly different. What we can see here is that the base color is already being populated and it's being populated by a bump texture. Okay, so what we've essentially, the, our logic here is that if that is populating the base color, then that will now need to populate the beauty pass of the right node. And the right node will populate the base color instead. So again, we, we're basically putting the switch in between. And then on our utility, this time, we'll use a flat green and again just check with the right color that it's referencing the matte ID which it is so let's render out again and see what we get and we can already see what we're getting there in the matte channel so you see that in the red channel we're getting an alpha for the car body and now in the green channel we're getting an alpha for the headlights so this is basically the premise of what we're trying to achieve okay so I'll do the same with the rear lights right click graph network which again we'll swap it out and again we can see a very similar configuration our base color is being populated by a texture so we're going to be coming in and we're going to be intersecting in between that so again I'll paste in those nodes from before so that needs to be populating the beauty pass so I'll just drag that out of the way and that needs to be going into the base color you can tidy these nodes up of course but uh, the premise is okay so again the utility again needs to be referencing a flat color I'll go for the blue this time again we need to make sure that the right node is referencing our custom layer so we render again 
now we can see the rear light is now part of that so we can see now that we've got our red green and blue channels of our custom layer basically populating these different parts of the car so that when we get into the composite we can isolate these specific parts of the car in order to perform specific operations okay this is good stuff you won't get this on digital tutors okay let's wait make one more mat again we'll use the same premise as the car alpha but this time we'll we'll use it to to get the windows so again i'm going to create myself a new layer and i'll call it window alpha layer just copy that just as well I did because I didn't save it okay and create myself a collection for this layer which again I'll paste that so I've got an alpha now for the window so again I only need the car group for this so I'll just add that in and now I just need to make my selections. In fact, I don't need the car group. I just need bits of the car. So I'm just going to come into the perspective view for this quickly. And just shift select the windows. Let's go and just check that I've got them all, which I have, which is all good. And then add them into the selection. Okay. And again, I want to use a material override. We remember I've got that surface shader there, which I'm just going to copy. No point creating a new one when there's already one there. So on the window alpha layer, which I'll just turn on, I will create a material override. And call it window alpha override and then just paste in that surface shader that we created before and let's render this and take a look and there it is in the alpha channel so this would be great for example if we wanted to completely isolate the windows in order to do something like maybe add specific kind of reflections on those windows and so on and so forth okay so that's all well and good so let's wrap up this tutorial then by creating some renders the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to bake the passes from the AOV layer into a single EXR file. So for this I need to come into my into my render settings and I need to go to my AOV tab. Now because I created all of my textures using the AI surface shader I can choose any one of these. What I need to do basically is I need to load the Arnold the, the default Arnold driver into the attributes panel. So if I just click on one of these and say select driver you see that basically brings up the Arnold the default Arnold driver and the only thing that I need to do in here is I just need to enable the merge AOVs it's as simple as that okay so I'm just going to jump back to the common tab I said I would do this um, I just want to refer to this little attribute here called file name prefix which by default says not set using seam name which basically means that any render that you render out from this file will basically be called the same as a scene which in my case is called BMW underscore tut okay now this is not conducive for an approach that involves multiple files and multiple passes because essentially every single one is going to, going to have the same name so when you get into the composite it's virtually impossible to work out what pass is what okay so this is where Maya created this system of render tokens which now enables you to actually customize the way in which Maya creates folders and files and the way that it names them so a lot more flexibility okay so the key to actually observing this is this path this currently tells us that my renders are going into the images folder of my render project if you set your project up correctly that should be correct 
and the file name in this particular case is going to go into a folder called AOV layer and then BMW TUT. But of course what about our specular layer and what about our diffuse and what about our transmission and what about our custom mats? They're all going to be called BMW underscore TUT. So it's a problem. Okay? But it's not a problem that we can that, that we can't get around and we do it using render tokens. So if I right click on here you can see that we can basically create this little bit of code that basically puts a, a name into the scene for us. Now so you see for example that we could add render layer and what that will do now is that that will basically name each of these files as the render layer for the for the file. So this one this layer will be called AOV layer. And the next layer to be laid, laid out, the ambient occlusion one, will be called AO layer, and then mat ID layer, and so on and so forth. So just by doing that, we basically create that situation. We could append this as well, so we could uh, we could add a add a slide and 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 select render pass. And what that would do is that would create as a subfolder and create and put all the various renders into a subfolder. So if we weren't actually baking all our, all our passes into a single layer, we could do that and it would create subfolders for us. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn that off. Okay, so these are tokens, really useful. And you can see that we can put uh, versions, so we can use iterative approach, we can apply dates. So, uh, so we can essentially create, you know, create a, a, multi, a multiple thread uh, render process, which, uh, which we can then uh, get to within the, uh, within the images folder. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, and then the last thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the samples and I'm just going to increase the samples. In this particular case I'm just going to double them up, so uh, yeah, I'll take the diffuse, the specular up to four, transmission, I'll take it up and subsurface. Um, I'll leave I'll leave volume. Oh, in fact, I'll turn volume off because uh, because we we're not using volumetrics, so there's no need for that. Okay, so that's my uh, that's my samples all increased. Now that is going to significantly slow down the render. We know that, uh, but obviously we, that's going to eliminate all that noise and other debris that we had in our uh, in our preview scenes. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We're ready to render. Whoops, I didn't want to drag that in there. So, we're ready to render. I've got my AOV selected. Okay, I've got my master scene deselected. So, this is where I need to make sure that I'm in my rendering tab. And then I come to render, render sequence options. It's really important that you don't, don't just hit render se sequence for reasons that I'm about to show you. Okay, because by default, this will be set to the perspective camera, which means that you won't be getting the render from the camera that you've actually got set out. So important that we select that. And then the other thing that we need to make sure we, we do is that we tell it to render all the render enabled layers. So basically this is all of the layers that have got their clapperboard turned on. You can see I've turned the clapperboard off for the master scene because I don't need that. But it will render all of these in turn so we don't have to basically go through each one and doing render sequence each time. So that's pretty much it. We just now hit the render sequence and go make a cup of tea. I'm going to pause the screen capture now and come back when it's finished. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the render completed. So we'll just take a look at what this has created now. So here we are in the images folder, and we can see that this these are the uh, these are the files that it's created, and you can see that they've been named after the layers in the way that I named them in the um, in the render layers panel. Okay, so just going to slide those off screen and just open Nuke so that we can just take a look at the contents of these layers. So I'm just going to bring them in, just organize them a little bit. Okay, so we'll start with this AOV layer. This should be the layer that contains all the AOV data. So if we take a look up here, we can see all of our channels that have all been baked in because we merged the, merged the layers. So you can see there's the, there's the composite alpha of the car and the shadow. This is the matte layer, so we can see that the there's the car in the in the red channel, the headlamps in the green, and the uh, rear lights in the blue channel. Uh, that we'll see certain files like certain passes like the background there, the coat. Although I thought I may have seen something in the coat. 
Okay. Uh, the diffuse direct, so we can see that, and we should see the diffuse indirect with more detail. And then we should have the specular direct, which is just the, the real highlights, and then the indirect specular. So we can see that this is the effect of our of our passes. I'm not sure what else will be in there, but it gives us an idea about what uh, what we're looking at. So if we take a look at this, this is the car layer where we generated our alpha. So if we look in the alpha channel there, we can see that we've got the, the whole car in there. And the same with the windows. So again, if we look in the alpha channel of the windows, we can see that the alphas are there. Then we have our wireframe image. And we have our ambient occlusion. Okay. So we've got quite a, li quite a bit to be getting on with there. I'll just close that down. So if you've got yourself to that stage on your own project, then you're ready for the uh, you're ready for the next part of the tutorial, in which we will actually be working on those passes in new, breaking out the various channels, and then doing some visual enhancement on the individual sort of elements of the image. Okay, so I hope you found this useful. It's been a long tutorial, but hopefully it will get you on your way.